Hi. Welcome to Painting with Shauna on Thursdays. I am so glad that you've joined me either live or later when you've watched on YouTube or on Facebook. And if you happen to want to subscribe to either of those, awesome. Today I'm wearing an orange shirt. It is the Canada's inaugural day of truth and reconciliation, a day of reflection of what the experience our, in, our Indigenous people have had since uh, Europeans have landed on our shores and the damage we've done. Um, residential schools are definitely the biggest issue and they keep finding more and more unmarked graves of children who their families never knew what happened to them and they never returned home after being taken to go to res residential school. Sadly, a lot of the, the idea that Indigenous people are less than uh, is, is pervasive around the world and is still very pervasive in our society. Uh, and it really has led to, it's leading to very difficult things for our young people and our Indigenous people to have to deal with. So I wear orange in honor of that. Um, today, I last week, I started with the, uh, I, I did part of the color study. And it was interesting because the last time I did a color study, right up there, I actually changed colors because I realized that I wasn't really pleased with them. This one, I'm actually really pleased with the colors and I haven't changed them at all. And I'm pleased with the value of the reeds so that they're pushed back more. If you were on my newsletter, you got a series of three pictures that showed you what the picture looked like when I got it out of the camera, some uh, post-production work, and then getting it to the point where I felt like what I wanted was the, the pintails to stand out, not get lost completely in the reeds. Um, anyway, and I talked about cameras and how they don't deal with a lot of harsh light and, and shadows are really dark and lights are really light. But if you want to sign up for my newsletter, just go to dancingravenstudio.ca and it's right at the bottom of the page. So let's get, um, let's get going on this. I'm, I'm working on the reeds. I've, I've got this part on the second pass. So I did the first pass. There's lots of orange of uh, the burnt sienna still seeping through, but that will be gone by the time I finish the second pass. So I, I, this area is complete and I'm ready to go onto this reed and we're gonna work just in this area. I'm, we'll see what we get done in an hour. If you're here, say hello. You're going to see me put this arrow on here because I just kind of need to keep my eyes to where I'm at. And I have an answering arrow on the image that's beside me. Okay, getting my brushes going again. I'm going to be using um, my very favorite brush, the Princeton Flat uh, and the uh, Robert Simmons Sapphire Soft Brushes. Again, uh, because I've got a lid on it, you'll hear me going up and down and up and down and up and down. Um, where am I at? I want to lighten that up a little bit. I'm not happy with how dark this is, so I'm just going to lighten it up. It'll still be just pouncing it around. So when you have a camera and you're taking pictures in, in very bright sunlight, so this, I took pictures of this on May the 19th. Yes, there was still lots of snow on, on our lakes, and in fact, on the... 15th of May, just a few days earlier, I actually photographed snow machine guy people on their snow machines uh, running the gauntlet over the little bit of water 
onto the ice on Range Lake. So it was a late spring this year. Oops, Ooh. flung that right out of my hands. Okay, I think that's a much better value. I don't want, I want the deep dark to be on the bird. I don't want it to be in the background as much. So I'm just gonna soften those values a little bit and There we go. Lost edges. Oh okay, yeah, that's much better. Then we have here, this shape here. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, down here more. So I'm looking back and forth at the image that I have next to me and and with the arrow so that it helps my eyes to go to the place I want it to right away versus having to search this is a lot of detail it's a lot of um, small details on these reeds we've got light um, being captured on the reeds and then cast shadows and a shade side of the of the the reeds Hey, we need a smaller brush too. Let's see if we can find here. Oh, I thought I had a taller, smaller brush. There we are. Okay. Okay, so now let's get some of the highlights in place. And my goal is to make this side lighter and get it darker as we go across. So the highlights over here are going to be much brighter than the highlights on the uh, on the far side. So is anybody here? Can you say hello? If you're here, put it, put your uh, hello in the chat, and I'm hoping the technology is working. It said I had lots of uh, lots of. Um, of speed uploading today, but you know, it's Northwest Hill. You don't quite believe them fully. Okay. Okay, lighten that up. Ha, huh. there's a lost edge right there where a shape disappears into the other shape. Okay. So I'm just building up the shapes and, and we'll come back and work on them more as I get a sense of what I'm doing here, what I'm seeing. And right here. Okay. Now, what we are seeing is as the light moves away, we're seeing that the value shifts down further. And it's d not as bright down here. Like it's just interesting. And I don't care if I go into the next shape a little bit because I'm working left to right. I'm going to, uh... oh good. Good, I'm glad that it's looking more solid and you, you found me. Mom, that's great. Glad when uh, Northwest Tell is working better. Problem when you live far away from the rest of the world. Okay, so now I'm gonna start to come in with that that softer brush and I'm going to move the paints and blend them together. You have a little bit of time to do that and then you lose that time. So it's, it's really, you have to move fairly quickly to blend the colors, the values together so that they fit better. Okay, we got this light here. We have some here, 
and we're just going to take the brush and I'm going to move it around and soften this edge because I don't want to ooh, take the paint off and soften this edge. Then come in and look at the different shapes. So I'm now working with a Rosemary Zero Eclipse Rigger. So it's a longer brush um, for the small details. Just want the small details in here. And then I can take a little bit of that paint and smush it around so that it lightens up, but it still creates the look that I'm looking for. And here is another ridge. Reeds are really interesting. They've spent the whole winter being bashed by snow and wind and whatever. And so they end up with a lot of really interesting shapes on them that they don't have when they're green. When they're green, they're pretty solid and they're fresh and they're growing. But these ones have more... Uh, Okay, so where are we? We're here, we're coming down, we're coming down into here. Get a little bit of that light. Ooh, I got something happening on my brush. An errant. Okay. Every once in a while you'll have a brush where one, uh, bristle will go and it can impact others and so I just cut them out and if it's more than that then I'll just take them all out too because brushes get damaged from use okay and I always keep my scissors handy dandy right there because it's one of the more annoying things about brushes let's soften that out And I'm going to bring that, that harder brush, the Dakota, in to reshape and push that paint back to the shape that I'm looking for. Okay. I'm happy with that. We can see that we could put a little bit more light just on there, just a tiny bit more. Just to, and I'll blend it out. I've got too many brushes in my hand, so let's ditch one of them. I'll blend it out. I don't want to blend it too much because I don't want to lose that light. And then I'm going to come up and I'm going to see that I, okay, need to pay attention to my, I'm hoping that it, was that a very long mum? Forgot to start my timer. Okay, we're back. Um, put a little bit of that light there and soften it out. Put it there. So I just want it on the edge of the reed because that's where most of the light is being captured. It's the area that's turned towards the sun. Okay. And I'm seeing, I need that, move that arrow, that there is, where am I here? There's a little capture of light here. Interesting. That comes down this way. Huh. So all these little details I mean, and overall, at the end, it's just going to be, uh, you know, masses that just sort of blend into each other. And you'll know that they're reeds, but they're, um, yeah. So, um, 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 here down, let's just put a little highlight there. Um, let's highlight this one a little bit more so that it's got better shape. That's good. Oh, I see what that is. Okay. 
you know, as you look closer and closer, you're surprised at what you're seeing in the, in the process here. Okay, let's bring lighter value, just a little bit lighter into here. And I'm noticing that there's some variations in the, in the cast shadow. And I know that this is a cast shadow because it's quite strong and it's, it's not only on one side of the, of the reed. And there's all sorts of variations in here happening. We can just allude to the shape of them and not worry about one here. So I'm just going back and forth with my little brush. Just making sure that I'm covering that that orange, that burnt sienna, because you don't do that it's just gonna hang around and be a problem there are artists who really do like that uh, the background color to come through I'm just not one of them and I'm gonna need a slightly hmm, softer brush that is yeah, let's see what's this one here so I have a whole pile of brushes here, I'll show you. I have a whole pile of brushes that I work from. These are the ones I use day to day. And so, you know, as I'm working, I can just reach across and get what I'm looking at. And there's different brushes in there to do different things. So I just need a little bit more paint and I'm finding that the hard brush doesn't really grab enough paint. And the soft brush is, you know, sometimes sometimes grabs too much. So I just need that sort of in between. And then what I'm going to do is take this soft brush and just take that paint and move it around. Dry it off of the... And make sure all of that background is covered. Now, if I don't get shapes absolutely perfect in here, the reality is no one's going to know. You know, it's not, it's not crucial that they're exactly as, um, you know, as you're seeing them. It's, it's around what you're seeing. And covering over all of the um, all of that background color. Okay, a little bit darker there, just a touch. So this shape brush is also interesting because it's a um, what is it? It's an Isabe brush and it is, what's the shape of that? Um, flat, fil, uh, filbert, filbert shaped. So it's kind of is rounded, which I find quite interesting. Okay, now let's get some of those highlights going that just those little shifts of value that I'm seeing in this shadow. Shadows are never, especially on objects like this, are never just one solid area. Uh, there's often light reflecting into different areas of this because it's, um, 
because it's organic and the light is floating all over the place. So we got some lighter and we got some darker shapes in there. Clean my brush off. Um, let's look for that little bit lighter there. Let's see there. There's a little bit more light here, and actually, I think I'm going to grab some of that that redder tone. I have a just to add that in there, and I'm going to take my brush and soften that edge so that it looks like it's a highlight. Now I'm going to come in and put the darker values in because of course there is darker values. Got all my brushes cleaned off. I don't want to, I'm going to take that hard brush out of my hand right now. Um, so I'm going to get the darker values. And I'm going to come into the dark areas here. And, oops, no, that needs to be darker yet. Okay, I'm mixing the color as, I, oof, as I'm going along here. Because I have little puddles of all sorts of different colors. And then there's all the in-between colors that you're looking for. So I'm coming down here. And I'm going to come down here, and there's a shape there, and there's a shape that goes like this. And so basically I'm drawing with my brush at this point to make it look more like what I'm seeing. And I see some dark here. And where else? I see a little bit of dark here. We'll give it some texture there. Um, there's a little bit of dark here. And it comes across here. And then this is not that dark. Let's look, look the next shape. And I come and that one across. And then there are some other shapes here that are dark and we want to put them in place. Probably not the best brush to work is this little brush for this, but I wanted to get the paint off because, you know. Okay, so let's get across this lighter area with the darker reeds that are falling across. And this area here is actually the snow beyond, um, beyond um, the reeds. So I have to get that box out to deal with in just a few minutes. So I get those shapes in. I know what they look like. I know where their position is. And then I can come back and again create the nuances that I need to create. Like that needs to be much lighter so it stands out a little bit. Now nothing is standing out a lot. This is very subtle shifts of value um, all the way through this. I'm going to take my softer brush, even though I've probably let this dry a little bit, I'm going to just see if I can soften those. There, yeah, there we go. And soften it a little, just to make it fit into, onto it so it doesn't look on, on it as much. And I also notice that there's more light there that I'm I've missed some of the light, so let's get 
So we have, this is bright light, so let's get the lightest value that I have here and put it in place. And softly soften it. Okay. And then there's some light right here. And I'm going to soften it, get the right brush, and pull it up a little bit. Get that shape of it there. Come back, put a little bit more in, soften it a little bit more. So when I'm doing the second pass, I'm trying to get things as accurate as possible. The third pass is just for all the little tweaks and the final work that I need to get done. And I see that there is a really noticeable lighter area right there. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to come down here and there's a light area here. I, again, I'm not worried if it's going into the other part. Yes, indeed. Blame it all on me. That's all right. <laughs> okay, so now we're coming down and the light is getting a little less bright. So I'm just going to bring a darker value and I'm going to look and see where I'm seeing that slightly darker value. And back and forth here. So my head is moving a lot as I'm looking back and forth before I put the paint too far on. Soften that. Bring my finger in and remove some of the paint. And there's some more light here. And soften that. Just push it out a little bit. And, and up here as well. I always find it interesting how in, uh, varied the, um, where the light is being captured. It seems like it would be quite um, in one place and yet it turns out to be quite uh, quite around, you know, all over the place. That's what makes painting fun and painting in realism fun is actually looking at what you're seeing, like what you're actually seeing what you're looking at. So what's the weather like in Atacokan, Mom? We, got, we were at five degrees when I went out today to get my orange shirt. It was like, oh, this is a little chilly. I think that next week we're going to see uh, temperatures drop even more. Uh, winter is, is arriving. Get some variation in there. So I love painting realism. And there's a lot of people who, you know, they're not fans of realism. They want to do other things. And I think, you know, the best part about art is there's lots of ways of doing it. None of it's right. None of it's wrong. It just is. And that I find really fun. I have a Sunday morning group that we uh, are all realist painters. And... We're really uh, cheer each other on and are really happy for everybody's successes. And, and you know, if you're having a struggle, this is the group to share that with. And, and, and you can share your successes as well. One of the group just did her first live stream on Instagram today. And I just happened to be at the computer at the right time. So I was able to 
say hello to her, to her. She's getting ready for her show that opens up here um, in just a, on the 22nd of October down in Myers Gallery someplace in the States. Sorry, I don't remember where Myers Gallery is. I'd have to look that up. My show will be broadcast live from from upstairs. We'll make my our living room to look like a, a studio for the first five years of my show. I held it, well not particularly in this house, I held it at this address. Um, we had a year that, that uh, we had to move out of the house because of an oil leak. So we um, ended up uh, with a brand new house. And so uh, five of my shows, four of my shows were here. One show was during the oil leak, so it was um, elsewhere for that year before I was asked to join the gallery. But with our COVID numbers being as high as they are, they've shut down school. They did that on the on the, oh September 14th. And now they're not even sure when school is going to open because it's not. And we're now isolated in our houses. Um, you can't have anybody in your house until this sort of settles down again. This comes in waves. We've been really lucky here in the north. We've had really good um, uh, rules and uh, around that protected uh, everyone. But as we got more vaccinated and we hit the 80% mark, then the rules softened and started to open up. Probably, well, you know, it opened up and it is what it is. We're here where we're at. So I'm looking at this shape and again remembering it doesn't have to be perfect because it's reeds. I do have to remind myself that the goal is to get close, not to be absolutely perfect because I will never be. I'm not a high realism person. I'm a realism person, but I'm not a photorealistic person. If you, uh, oh. How lovely that it's been lovely weather, Mom. Yes, I would say share, but it's not going to work anymore at this point of the year. <laughs> We've actually had a really good... Um, <laughs> yeah, no frozen lines. Yes, no water lines to freeze. We've had a, actually a really good September this year. So I'm, you know, I can't complain too much because we just had our first frost two days two nights ago and my sweet peas are still blooming my um, pansies are still blooming and amazingly if they could if I probably watered them it'd probably be helpful the dahlias are still trying to bloom but they don't have the heat that they need to bloom they're just trying to okay I am going to say that I'm there for that particular one. I'm going to look and see where else I could make it better, add the light. And I'm stepping back to look between the two images. Okay, so let's go in between. Now that's the snow one, so I have to find the snow one. <laughs> Oh, contail ice. That's what I'm looking for. So I have different elements in these containers and uh, it keeps it, because I'm only working on 9 by 12 sheets, it actually keeps it, um, keeps it easier to manage um, when I'm mixing my colors and, and working with them. So the pintails are in a in a, a container and the ice is in a different container. Ooh, I think I want a little bit more blue in there and a little bit more white. I need that value up. 
Yeah, there we go. Let's get that value even higher. Let's get more light in there. Okay, just building it up and using this small brush where I can hold a lot of the paint and, and move it around. And I'm going to come in with a very small brush for the smaller areas and build these shapes up. So this is the ice that's in behind on May the 19th, subarctic living. I think that's the latest we've ever had ice on the lakes here. I don't remember it being that late other years. I mean, I remember later years, but not quite like this year was. Okay. Get the small one in so I can get into the cracks here, the shapes. And there we go. Nice strong shape there. Okay. Now as I come down the ice, I don't really want it light, light, light at the so I'm just going to use a slightly darker value. I don't want a deep, oh, like a hugely darker value, but enough, enough that it looks like it's being pulled closer. So light is further away. If you live in the south, you see that often where um, you're looking at the vista at a distance and it, it gets paler and bluer and, and you lose... You lose the yellows, you lose um, the warm tones fairly quickly. And I, it really is noticeable on foggy days here because foggy days are, um, um, oh yeah, I've got some interesting shapes back here. Foggy day, we don't have, we have pretty clean air here, so we don't really have particles in our air to be able to, and I'm just going to soften this because I'm seeing it's a little streaky and I don't want that. And blend it down into that darker value. Now, I did go over an area I don't want to go over, so it's all right when you're going, so I'm just going to bring my heart, my, oops, Bring my brush and push that paint forward and back into where I want it. Okay, I can see in the background that there is, let me get a different brush here. Um, let's see if this is, is um, some, you know, there's some, um, off this and turn it back on. Let's start again. Um, some interesting shapes back here in the snow and it just, ooh, that seems a little dark, doesn't it? Well, let's lighten that up by just pouncing it out and moving that paint around to get that shape that I'm looking for. So, let's get, okay, if that was too dark, then I'm going to bring that over into it and bring some light into it, maybe a little bit more blue. Okay, so now we can bring in. And I can darken it up as I go along, but at least I'm getting the shapes in place. And I'm seeing that there's some darker around here. Okay. Being careful about this side, but not about this side. It doesn't really matter about this side. And blending it up. So I'm going to take my brush that I've dried off and is soft and, 
I'm just going to soften that paint and get just the shapes right in there and then I'll add the little value shifts that I'm seeing in there. Some of the lighter value in. We're going to reshape that a little bit. Dry off my brush and ooh, where was I? There I was. Pull that down and around. Bring a little bit of that darker value in. Okay. I am seeing in this area that has less, um, that has the background in it, I'm seeing that there is a reed that's a part of a reed that's here, but it's not a fat reed. So I'm not even sure if it's like a grass almost, it looks like. Oops. Ice down. And get back to the reeds. So let's start with a value five. And we're going to just put that shape in. It comes across here, comes down. It thickens up right in here. And it comes down here. It's got some interesting shapes. And then it thins out. I'm gonna to have to thin that out with the lighter stuff. And I'm going to take a value four for in behind. I see there's, there's a piece of grass or some sort of part of the reed that is in behind and darker. And it comes right up along there and leans against the other reed. Well, that gets that shapes in there. I'm happy with that. I'm going to take a chroma two. So most of the um, chromas that I'm working with are one and two. I don't think there is any. Oh, there is a chroma six. And, and when you, I'm talking about chroma, one is getting you almost on top of gray, two is a little further away. By the time you get to six, it's quite colorful compared to what it had been when it was closer to the gray. And I'm going to bring in variation in here that I can see and bring my Yeah, ah, I like that. And I can see there's a little bit more chroma. So here, this is, you can see that it's more orange. So I don't want it to be a big piece of orange. So I'm going to clean that off and just move it around to add some variations. We like variation in our paintings. It makes them interesting. Okay, um, add a little, okay, mixing a different color up here just to add some variations into this reed and then dry my brush off really well and pounce it and build up that reed so that it has some interest in it. It doesn't need to be a lot of interest, but it does need to have a little bit of variation. Oh, 
Okay, I am happy with that. I'm happy with that. This could still be a little bit, I know what it needs. It needs that little bit of that um, chroma that's more towards the orange there. That's with the, uh, the colors that I used for this are, um, are, <laughs> I keep blanking out on the colors that I used. Yellow ochre, cad red medium, and that's how I made my oranges. Uh, burnt umber and burnt sienna, uh, burnt sienna for the background, burnt umber and raw umber for changing the values and the, and the chroma and also the Munzel neutrals. Okay, backing up. Well, let's move to this one here. Um, yeah, I see there's some variations. I want to wait for that to dry. So let's get this brush. I've got a lighter area again. So let's take the value nine, which is just value nine with um, the yellow ochre. And I'm going to look at this shape and have fun with it. Pull it down. Put enough paint on so that it covers it well. And then I'm going to blend out this bit here. So I'm going to have to come back to that anyway. Because I have to get the whole shape in place. It helps to have context. What are the challenges when you're painting, when you're you know, just drawing stuff out, is, is one shape leads to the next shape leads to the next shape. Ooh, yeah, no. Let's take some of this. And a little bit of light. Let's see what we get. And shapes are in context with each other. It helps to inform you if you've got the right angle, the right movement. And you can slowly build them up. But if you, I find that if I try to do something without context, it's really hard to, to find that. And I can see I've missed some oranges up here. That's why I have a third pass, <laughs> because I'm gonna need it. Um, so that there, and now let's get into the darker. And I'm trying to switch up the colors a bit by um, adding different colors in uh, different. Ooh. So that's the shape there. And you'll notice that these are rounded shapes because reeds are curved shapes. So we, we need to think about that as well when we're putting it all together. And we're looking at the highlights, we're looking at everything, we're thinking about all of how round it is. Right now it looks pretty flat, but by the time I finish it won't look flat. Okay, step back, see what I need to do here. Here's another shape to bring in context with with this light shape and bring it down bring the paint to the tip of the paintbrush okay slowly but surely and there's a number of pieces in there I mean I've made a big space but I can see that there are other reeds next to each other. You can actually see when you uh, do this, there's the other reed is right in there. There. Okay, let's get some of the light. And this is what I do for hours all by myself. <laughs> when the, the uh, um, 
notice came down that at midnight last night you were no longer allowed to have anyone in your household other than uh, our son can come because he's part of our bubble um, we can go to his place because he's a single person and uh, they don't want to you know annihilate people um, I just thought well okay the only people who come into my house right now are you guys on the live stream I've been pretty much here by myself for a while okay now seeing that variation let's get some of that well let's get some of that I'll get some interesting color in there let's soften the brush dry it off and soften out these colors and soften between them okay 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 when it gets down it just gets to the darker so let's get some of that and i need a And I keep looking back and forth because because you can get lost in just the shapes and not actually pay attention to what's happening in front of you. <laughs> and there's been other times I've stepped back and went, oh, oh right, okay, let's uh, let's pay attention here. So we have just about ten minutes left here today. I'm so glad that you guys joined me. Um, yeah, so I'll just keep on working here. You can see how much I got done in an hour and how, you know, I'm spending a lot of time backing up, moving forward. Okay. Let's put that arrow back where I can now that paint should have dried enough that I can put that arrow and not worry about lifting paint. It's just a little sticky arrow that I've made. Okay, let's put some of that light in there. So it's lighter on one side because of course the light is coming from one side and then it darkens up as it moves to the uh, away from the light. Okay, we're coming down. Can you hear Ian coming down the stairs? <laughs> Probably not. The microphone picks up my voice m much better than it picks up Ian moving around. Okay, and down here, let's get this shape more accurate. Take my harder brush and move that paint forward and be careful not to pull the paint from underneath because it's still it's in the process of drying okay we're getting there slowly but surely the other thing that people in my my newsletter got was the first peek at the at the finished painting of the uh, Hatfield and Ptarmigan snow sculpture. I haven't posted that anywhere, and so I put it on my on my weekly uh, newsletter. So if you're interested in getting sort of first look at things, um, not dibs because I'm I'm selling them at my show, and so I'm not actually doing doing that um, though that will come as time goes on then just go to dancingravenstudio.ca and sign up for my weekly newsletter 
I promise you it is not onerous and it's not a, I'm not um, filling your, I just send it once a week and I um, don't write a lot. I just tell you and you get the behind the process stuff. So this week was the three images of on how I was modifying it to get to where I wanted to be. I don't know what it's going to be next week. I haven't thought about next week. That's I don't even know if I'm going to have this finished by next week. It's a lot of work, so I probably will probably be working on the next week, probably on the water, which is very detailed. And you'll see how detailed it is when I have to actually put the image right next to it and tape it on right onto the painting because I can't even do distance from, from me. bit of this along the edge here and then we'll There we go. We're, it's coming, you know, it's just a process that I'm bringing in some of that light in here to give some variation. Make sure my brush isn't too damp because I clean it every once in a while and then just bring that light around because I see that the light is kind of playing with this part of the reed just because of the direction it's in okay so now i've got some form and interesting if i come up here with that little bit of light i need more paint challenge Challenge is to remember where you actually got the color from, too. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay. Okay. And a little bit more. Where am I seeing? Okay. I'm seeing this shape here. It's like, it, like it's here around it because it's a round shape and then it's coming down a little bit along this edge and I'm just going to soften that gently 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 soften that paint so that it's soft between the two and then I'm going to lighten what's on my brush I still have some paint on my brush and I'm seeing that it comes up here to just over here and then down. So it lightens that value just there. And then there's a little bit of a darker edge. Right along here. Okay. Okay, well, where are we at here? We're just a couple minutes away, so I think we can, this would be a good place to finish. You can see that I've got this little area kind of done in an hour. You can extrapolate how long it's going to take me to, to uh, continue on and get the rest of it finished. Hopefully by next week I will have all of the reeds done and maybe the birds and then I'll be on to the water. And the water I actually printed the images twice so I can cut them apart, the second one apart, to put right next because it's quite complex and I'm finding the distance between 
here and the image is too far, like I can't remember what the shape is. That, so it's very helpful in the complex water, especially underneath the ducts where all they've got their patterning and everything that I have it close by. So next week we will be on to the water and then the following week we'll be on hopefully to another painting. But we'll see how the week goes. Anyway, have a great week. We will see you in seven days.